Hello friends and welcome back. So this week we are going to tackle putting the 18th century gown back together. I have so many thoughts to share with you on that, but I thought I might go over some of the things that are going on in the room this week before I get into that. Okay, so we're going to take fix 18th century for sure. I also want to clean out my back drawers on my giant work table and clean out the right set of drawers at the very least on my sewing table. I may or may not get to that, we'll see, and I may or may not get to other things that are on here. Okay, so I started this project like nine months ago when I went to Abby's house in 2021. I think it was like the beginning of May. I have this dress that some of you may have seen, pictures here for you, that I made and it's from a JP Ryan pattern. I made it for reasons I will discuss later. <laughs> accidentally too large. So I brought it with me to Abby and Nicole's house and they basically tore the entire thing apart on my body <laughs> and then put it back together on my body so that I could have a well-fitting dress, which is so kind of them and I'm so pre appreciative of. Uh, however, the way <laughs> it got torn apart and put together is kind of making my life hard and so I started putting this dress back together and then just like gave up but it back to them to explain to me what the order of operations was that they thought I should put it back together and now I'm realizing like, oh, there's pieces missing, that's the problem. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna start doing that now. I have footage from nine months ago when I started doing that. I'm gonna maybe insert some of it here so that you guys can see what was going on then and show you what some of the problems are. So when I wore my 18th century gown out a couple of times, once in France and once with Lynn on a photo shoot, I started noticing little things that I thought could be better. I made the pattern, it was a JP Ryan pattern, it was a fantastic pattern for someone who doesn't have someone here fitting the clothes on you, which let me just tell you is a godsend when that can happen. So I was doing my best at the time. Uh, but there are some things that are wrong. One, there is some gaping right here because the shoulder straps are set in kind of a weird way and they're, they're cut on the bias, which is really strange and really shouldn't be happening on an 18th century gown. I, we're not all sure why the J.P. Ryan pattern is cut that way, but it was. So it ended up stretching, which gave me extra room right here so you could see my stays on the side. It's really not that bad for me because my stays are the exact same two colors as my dress. They're like this cream and this red and they blend in perfectly so it's very hard to tell. But I was wearing a fichu in order to cover that problem and I, I would rather have the option to wear a fichu but not have to wear a fichu if you know what I mean. So there's gonna be a fix for that. Also it's a little bit large <laughs> weirdly like it's just slightly too large. Like Abby was looking at it one day and she's like you probably could have cut it a whole size smaller. I took the shortcut of sewing hook and eye tape down the center front so I just hook it up when I put it on which is fantastic. It is uh, something that is in the pattern like they just have you put hooks and eyes there so you can just as easily put tape there um, instead of pinning it <laughs> and pinning is the historical way and there's a reason it's the historical way because it lets you fit your gown to any size you are. <laughs> so unfortunately that means my gown is one size at all times and that size is slightly too large for me in my stays which on the grand scheme of things great it's way better than it being too small for me i will take it but it looks a little like loosey goosey frumpy especially if i'm sitting down there's some pictures of like you can see wrinkling here and clothes wrinkle people like clothes are never perfectly like on you and also someone with like especially my body type like I move in mysterious ways <laughs> and so clothes will wrinkle on me like I'm about to show you um, the the back of my dress right here it was pulling things happen but the armpits are actually too low um, they were the pattern just calls for them to be that way and I didn't know any better to raise them at the time now I know better. The sleeves, uh, the sleeve witch, Claudine, repatterned my entire sleeves up for me and Abby and Nicole took those completely off, looked at them and said, actually they're great. <laughs> like we were very worried that they were going to be a little bit too modern or whatever and they're like, no, these are great. <laughs> they just had to set them in slightly differently. So Abby did a whole bunch of things, Nicole did a whole bunch of things together. Basically we took off 
this is the shoulder strap <laughs> and they just made new ones out of perfectly rectangular pieces of fabric so they're not curved at all like that and they're just basted on there and that's actually how they're supposed to be done so that is the way they are done now the last thing that they did and to take up some of the room of it being slightly too large for me is that there is no side back seam in the JB Ryan pattern it just doesn't exist so Abby and Nicole created one out of my extra fabric I'm going to go ahead and take this camera off the stand and show you what happened to the dress so you guys can see the state it's in right now. And we're going to talk about what I think I'm going to do to the dress in order to make that happen. This is a leveling up of skills for me, so wish me luck. <laughs> okay, here is my dress. It is um, just loosely set on my mannequin because I don't want to ruin anything. Uh, it is polonized up right now and let me just show you. These are my stays. <laughs> so... This is the perfect match for stays, like honestly I couldn't have done any better, so this is why they don't show. So we did also have a look at these stays, these are the JP Ryan half bone stays, I made these forever ago when I had no idea what I was doing about historical costuming. Uh, however, they said these are great, they actually fit great and they have a good silhouette. The only thing I need to do is take this grommet and put another one basically here because the strap hits me in a weird spot. And I did what the pattern said, but not what I needed to do for me. So we're going to just add a grommet and call it good. All right, so on a normal dress, a gown, you would find a seam right here, which is on your side back. I do not have one of these. This piece just goes all the way around. So they essentially took out a bunch of the extra room I had, which was about an inch on each side, in order to go ahead and give me the seam, which is fantastic. I am going to mark these where this happens on the inside and I'm going to swap this essentially dart to the inside <laughs> which is going to be an interesting thing to do. I also have to figure out how to to line up this particular zone right here to make it smooth. I am contemplating the fact that I'm going to you know lose a bunch of space right here. So, uh it doesn't really make sense for me to leave that I think I'm going to end up taking the skirt off back to about here so that I can redistribute it because one of the other things that happens is so on the front here this spot right here is just slightly too high and my skirts actually show like the very top of my skirt show right here which is not something you particularly want and because that's about an inch and I do I mean I have some nice tiny plates here which <laughs> they're like you don't have to have plates that small there uh, they said, why don't you go ahead and just move these skirts slightly forward. So if I can just move that inch forward, that would be fantastic. I'm kind of like, rip my life, <laughs> because I have all these teeny tiny little stitches in here that I put in. There you go, you can see them. That I'm so sad about having to rip out. <laughs> but in the spirit of making this gown better, fantastic. Okay, so the sleeves are reset. There's now just two little tucks at the top here. Um, we're gonna use as little seam uh, allowance as possible in this armpit area instead of the half an inch on each side that I was granted. We're gonna see how close we can get it. And as you can see, I had exactly the right amount of fabric left over to make a new shoulder strap. So currently these, this is just basted down, so I'm gonna need to go ahead and just top stitch this in so that the, the sleeve stays set and then take a lining piece which I'm just gonna use any old piece of muslin I have and go ahead and cut it at roughly the same shape and top stitch that down also into this area so essentially this gown is gonna has already been taken apart when they I really wish I had filmed it they when they took it apart they took it apart on my body so essentially my sleeves and these shoulder straps were not on the dress while I was standing there in it and the dress did not come off me. Like it was on my body still the entire time. I don't, it had no support. I don't know how it stayed up. Maybe they pinned it and I just didn't notice, but <laughs> it was kind of an amazing feat of engineering and it was kind of an awesome thing that made you feel like a little bit of a princess because you had two beautiful seamstresses working on your dress and they are some of the most highly educated in this style of dress in the country so i was really honored to have that happen to me anyway here is my little hack you can see the hook and eye tape going on in here i could take that out and make this a closure that overlaps and pins 
but that would be a little bit rough at this point because we have now made it exactly as tight as it needs to be to close down the center front. Uh, they were saying that they don't usually see two pieces of trim down the front, which is funny because I actually like literally just saw a dress yesterday on <laughs> two down the front and I was like, oh hey, okay, not completely inaccurate, great. Anyway, this dress fits significantly better now that they have done this. One of the things that moving the shoulder strap has done is altered this location. So first of all, it covers my stays more. They poke out a little bit right about here. There's not a lot we can do about that except take the trim and place it higher and maybe put a tucker behind it. So that is something I'm going to be looking at doing and making as well. But for my first shot at a 18th century gown, they both said that this was a, a fairly decent go and it's a perfectly respectable outfit to be wearing out about on the town. So I am very excited to get the seal of approval on this guy. I think kind of almost what has to happen is I have to like baste these. Um, I do kind of want to keep these pleats, so I was going to baste them down and then take the lining back. If I take the lining back out to here, so the lining and the, the outside fabric are separate, that would actually help me a little bit because then instead of just pushing this to the inside and going ahead and sewing a seam down so that it makes a false seam essentially, I could theoretically dart it both directions if that makes sense so that the lining one goes in and the outside fabric goes in and so it doesn't have a big chunky thing on the inside because essentially it would have shown, essentially it would have looked like this on the inside, like a dart. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see about that. I'm a little bit like oi, but we're remaking a dress here, so I think I kind of want to do it right. They are slightly uneven. That's another interesting fact because my back is slightly uneven. So I think this one is slightly larger than this one, which means this uh, dart doesn't line up the same way. So I'm gonna have to do my best to move it a little bit to get it into the right formation to just flow with that seam right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and baste these pleats down just to themselves all the way down past. This is where that fake pleat is. So I'm gonna do that on both sides because if I'm going to lose these, uh, these pleats, I want it to be because I decided to lose these pleats, not because some horrible accident happened. So we're just gonna nip that in the bud. Okay, we have our pink basting stitches in, and I'm going to zoom you in here manually for a rip ceremony <laughs> so we can say goodbye to these tiny stitches that I am was so proud of and will not be this tiny when I do this again, I'm sure. So, uh, goodbye little stitches. I'm going <laughs> to, me and Hannah were talking about this Marie Kondo it and just be like, thank you for your service. You did so good for me. So anyway, um, I am now going to mark the location of these pins so that I know how this dart thing works. And then I'm going to do it on both the inside and the outside. And then I'm going to rip this open and try to recreate this, but going in and going out. Fun, fun times. All right, evening check-in. I have both seams in. I have a little bit of regret about this pink chalk thing that I used. I have been trying to get it out with a bunch of rubbing with this, and it's working to some extent, but it is decidedly pink. It's decidedly pink on the outside, too, in some spots, but uh, I think it'll either go away or I just will decide not to care. Um, I have it stitched down to the outside, they, they, so I've re done that, I've re-stitched the pleats down to the outside and extended them. It used to stop here and now it stops here, so I will get more coverage. Um, and then I pinned this guy down, so I'm ready to, to replace my tiny little stitches. Uh, but it's 3.30 in the morning and I think I would like to go to bed now, so I think I'm gonna do this tomorrow. So, I will catch you on the flip side, or we will work on this. So basically, I fixed one seam. 
I need to fix the correlating other side seam to that and that's the first thing I need to do for sure. And then I'm going to need to move on to the sleeves and shoulders, which is the part of the dress that had to get refit almost entirely. It turns out my shoulders are like never what the patterns are, so <laughs> they basically just all need to be hand fitted and I don't know how I go forward in life with that because like I don't really have anyone who fits 18th century near me, so like I'm just gonna have to wing it. I could probably get a $1,200 dress for him that was exactly me and that might help. We'll see about that. Anyway, so let's look at the dress. Okay, this hideous pink line is from where I sewed the last seam together and I'm I'm actually super happy with that. It's totally fine. I don't mind the pink. It will come out. Um, now I have Frixion pen so I don't need to do this chalk situation. So I need to obviously do this one as well and get this seam fixed. Then I think what I'm gonna do is stitch down the underarms on this guy, although they're not pinned very well. Um, so I might need to try this back on to figure out where they need to get pinned. They're pinned in some places and not in others, and I think they were like, get it as close as possible. So I gotta figure out that. But I'm just gonna do this bottom part of the underarm. Here's where there are pieces missing. In a normal 18th century piece of clothing, for those of you who may not know, and this isn't always so, and I barely, barely know what I'm talking about, so maybe don't listen to me, but here's what I understand. <laughs> you have a lining piece that actually sets your sleeve strap. So, this piece that comes down here, and it's made out of lining, and you sew it to the other lining pieces in your dress, jacket, whatever, and that helps set exactly where that is. Then you take fashion fabric and you lay it over the top of it, tucking all the edges in, and top stitch it down. That isn't really a structural piece, it's more like... There's all this stuff that kind of comes together right here, like the sleeves come together and the dress comes together and everything, and that's just like the thing that like staples over it so that <laughs> everything looks clean and delicious, right? It's the last thing you normally would put on your dress is that sleeve cap, the fashion fabric layer of it. So when we rip this apart and put it together, we put the sleeve together with only the fashion fabric. There is no bottom layer. So when I'm trying to put this back together, I'm confused because I'm a, I don't have a lining and they're like, oh, just put a lining in. And I'm like, yeah, but I need to take the top piece off to put the lining in and then I won't need, I don't know where it needs to go. <laughs> so I've subsequently put together several 18th century gowns. So like I now understand how to do that. It is still sort of complicated for me and I have to wrap my brain around it a little bit. But thank God for Frixion pens because I can just like mark all of this. Some of those dresses like physically sewn together with like big old basting stitches. So I have to take those apart, mark it, and put it back together. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of kind of a, a like stressful thing. So what I'm gonna do, since this is just like all hand sewing, uh, you don't want to see an hour time lapse of me hand sewing this together. <laughs> Trust me, it's gonna be a nightmare. So I'll just do check-ins and let you know where I'm at and show you the seams that I fixed and stuff. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do. Is that back seam the other side of the back seam which is my left side in case you care <laughs> I am keeping with the pink theme with my pink Frixion pen which I have used to to mark this dart which I will then pull to the inside very excited about these Frixion pens they're amazing okay this blob is so weird to look at on camera <laughs> okay so this is the seam that I fixed so it's now been opened, everything's been flipped to the inside, uh, stitched down to make this seam that did not exist in the original pattern, and the skirt has been taken off, and the skirt used to stop about here, and I needed to move it forward because A, I took out some, some yardage here, but also um, it just hangs better if it's more forward, so that's what happened. It needs to be ironed for sure. Uh, to get out these lines and whatever but it's looking good and there was like a little kink earlier I don't know if you can see these dots here but uh, I managed to get that out so that's great so yeah I just need to press everything I'm gonna wait until I'm done with all of it before I start pressing it because like <laughs> it's gonna get wrinklier before it gets better so my hands are crappy though so I'm just gonna stop working for today okay we have Brunhilde back in the room and you can see the new seam that I sewed yesterday is here, um, which I am into. And then the one that was done before is this one right here. So they are a little different, but I don't think once you get the sleeve on there, it matters very much. Anyway, so I think today's mission will be to sew the sleeves on from like here 
all the way under the armpit to like here leaving this area free for me to work with <laughs> i'm gonna deal with the strap last the strap is the most important placement <laughs> it changes the fit of your dress like to the max you can see that they like frankened it on here for right now until i could stitch it down what i might do is literally just put a like pin a lining piece under that is the same shape as this and then just essentially like top back stitch them together through the sleeve and through here and through here to make one big strap that is joined so I won't sew them twice essentially I won't sew the bottom strap and then the top strap I'll just sew the top strap normally what you would be doing is sewing the sleeve onto the strap on the underside the the lining strap and then placing this on top to like it's like the rug in Lebowski it, it holds the room together <laughs> but that's not what happened because of I don't know actually why why we did it that way but that's what happened my issue with the sleeve right now is so they're pinned and as you can see they're pinned like with the seam allowances to the inside which is what it should be except I'm not gonna like back stitch this on on the top layer or anything I gotta flip it inside out and maintain the position of, e of the seam exactly where it is so I gotta figure out how to do that <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is the first thing I'm gonna do is take my iron and just like press this into a, a distinct fold so that I have something to follow here and then I might actually mark it with my uh, Frixion pen along the edge so I know where where the edge goes that that seems like a way I could do it these are, these are really long because these were actually hussifs. I was going to make two hussifs, so I had this much fabric exactly left over. So this is what I brought with me. Like, all I brought was two hussifs, and they made a new strap out of them, <laughs> which I find funny. And it's even funnier because neither one of them, like, cut it off or anything. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, I think I'm going to iron it so that there's a definite seam there so I can see where the, the line is, and then maybe I'll just draw the line in so that I know where to stitch. Yeah, that's what's happening, I guess. We're doing it on the fly. Okay, so that is done. They are in this pattern. So I think this dress is super cute. Obviously, I don't have stays on this, so... Um, but I don't know if I would use it again. It obviously has some issues. Like, things don't fit me right anyway in the shoulder, so, like, this is not one of the reasons. Like, I this is normal. <laughs> so it's not a problem. My shoulders will never fit until I have someone else set them, so I'm fine with that. But stuff like they tell you to use um, hooks and eyes here when this should be pinned. There's also like boning in here and in the center back, which I don't know if is necessary. Like, I don't really see a reason why this is required. This should stand on its own without having boning in it. I mean maybe to keep this peak but I've seen enough dresses that don't have that in there that that makes me question it also I've never seen an 18th century gown without a side seam although JP Ryan says that um she did it based off an extant so I don't know it's not a horrible pattern I remember it being kind of tough to like noodle out and I've had that, had other friends try it and be like what and I had to help them noodle it out so yeah it's not a horrible pattern there's just I mean if I did use it again there'd be definitely things I had to change about it I know I remember like these sleeves were a nightmare to do <laughs> and they're more modern than not and I have other 18th century sleeves that totally fit that I would probably use instead so I basically rebuilt the entire dress but just use the instructions <laughs> and I have shapes so I could probably cut my own shapes now that would fit better than this does um, but you know you could use the pattern as like something to lay over the shapes I guess to get your final your final master shape anyway yeah I'm not sure about this pattern okay so I'm gonna go ahead and at least pin some fabric in there and like try and tidy this whole section up like cut off the Franken stitches and stuff <laughs> um, so that I can get everything ready to go to sew down oh yeah I remembered another pertinent piece of pattern information that matters. The reason I had to get new straps cut was because the straps that they had you cut were cut on the bias, which is a big no-no. Um, straps, shoulder straps should always be cut on the straight of grain. This was cut on the straight of grain and should have been cut on the bias. So 
that's another another thing if you ever use that JP Ryan pattern that I would change. There's another JP Ryan pattern that I want to try, so we'll see how that one is. At least I'll know enough ahead of time to I don't know, be able be able to manage it. Um you know, I like I don't hate the hook and eye tape that I put in here or anything. Like that's great. But like they suggest hooks and eyes in here and I'm not I'm not, I, that's not really a thing. I've only ever seen it pinned, so I'm I like the hooks and eyes though. Okay, I'm gonna explain how I do this in case anyone ever needs to know this or in case anyone thinks that I'm really not very bright and doing this the wrong way. <laughs> uh, please don't really leave a comment because I don't care. It's already done by the time you see this. <laughs> okay, so I took um, a piece of cloth and I, on this side, I folded it over already, although it really should be folded over the other way at this point. Um, and I'll show you why in just a second. Um, and then I, uh, put it on the edge right here and then I basically cut out just a little bit larger than the strap itself because then I, this is why it needed to be folded over so that it's actually on the inside because this is going to be the side that goes up towards, you know, it's going to go exactly like this but inside. So all of these, uh, raw edges will be hidden. So then I just folded all this stuff up and I ironed it on. This one happens to have a selvage edge, so I used that. I didn't have enough on my scrap piece that I had. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this one inside out um, and do the same thing on this side. And then press it all. And then I'm going to take it off the top here, slide it underneath, <laughs> and pin it down. And then cut off all the Franken stitches and hopefully everything will just stay. <laughs> and then I can sew it. Okay, we have both shoulder straps on. Um, which is the good news. The bad news is... Do you see that? <laughs> uh, remember how I said the shoulder straps were set in differently? And I kept saying, they're different. This concerns me because this is a lot and I don't have like a weird like hump on one side of me. So that makes me think that some of this is set wrong and it needs to come down. My shoulders are not like my dummies and also they're shorter. So like my shoulder straps where this line is actually. <laughs> so that's great. Um, I, I love that that's true. Um, I really need to carve this dummy down. Uh, someday I'll get the nerve to do that. Um, anyway, okay, so it may not need to come all the way down, but I do want to check it. So I think I'm going to throw on my stays and have a look and see how it sits on me. This would be my right shoulder because my left hand is currently touching it and I'm facing her. So I'm going to throw on my stays and it'll be a good way for me to check if the new stays also work. And then... I want to check this because I have a feeling I need to pick this out and uh, redo at least this top half. I don't want to move this bottom half because this is actually set pretty good, but I will have to figure out a way to finagle this. You can see that the wedge that this makes here is completely different than how it fits here. It actually slides right on here and I think it should make a wedge. So I think this is just actually was pinned on weird or something happened when I was moving stuff around or whatever. I don't know what happened, but yeah, I think I need to, to figure that out. I, I didn't go through all this work to make this thing fit well to have that happen. Okay, so here we are. One, I love the way these stays fit under this. This is great. Two, the fit on this bodice is now way better. Love that. Look how like unwrinkled this is. It's great. I feel like that's awesome. It makes me know I do want a pair of these stays for sure in a lighter color. Um, like, do I want white or neutral? I also want to make a tucker for this, which is like a little ruffly thing that you put on a ribbon and then you just baste it in whenever you want. Uh, this will have this trim here, so this would be covered anyway, but I would like a tucker anyway. It's also, you can see that my stays, like my, you can definitely tell that my stays are black underneath it, so you definitely would like some white colored stays. But there's the culprit. See how the other shoulder doesn't do that? <laughs> So it is happening. So I do need to take it out and fix it. It's there. <laughs> so bummer, but um, at least I caught it, you know, so I know it's there. So I'm going to go ahead and just tear out that corner and start tucking and then pull out more and more thread as I need to to get it to sit right. But yeah, it's definitely happening. Like I'm holding a camera with that hand, but that's what it looks like normally. So mm, no, it should look like this other one. So I need to fix that. Okay, this looks better on the mannequin. It still doesn't look like the other side to some extent, so I'll have to check it by putting it on me right now. Um, but all I did was 
I cut it down to, you know, like here. Um, and then I took it out to about here and I just lifted this up and shoved the collar in there <laughs> and like kind of made sure that this was smooth. But you can see I got a wedge now, so that makes more sense. So I'm going to take this and try it on me now, pinned, um, just to see if it's good enough, if it looks great. If it does, then I will stitch it in. So it looks pretty good. It could probably use to be in there actually just a little bit more. Um, it's hard to show you. It's a little bit, you know how it was high a little bit on the, ma the mannequin? It is it is still a little bit high, like in the very back on me. This would be actually fine. <laughs> um, the other side just sits a little bit better. So I think probably the cut of the neck is causing that, but I'm going to see if I can tuck it in just a little bit more, get a little bit more grip out of it, and then try it on again. Okay, this is not a fair assessment because these are not on the same way. <laughs> um, but I think this is probably about as good as we're going to get it. Um, and I am fine with this. I'm going to go ahead and try it on one more time just to make sure everything looks good. And then if so, I'm going to stitch it down. Looks pretty good. Like, even with camera in hand, it's not bad. So, that's awesome. Um, I checked this out in the mirror and everything looks good. The back looks great. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about this dress being together in a very nice way and the shoulders stay on a lot better and they fit over these stays better than my other stays for sure so I, I am definitely hype on them. I have a couple more things I will need to do. I need to fix the armholes like I need to cut them down and sew them in and then also there's trim that goes around the outside here that I need to find and then sew back on. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to put the tucker on as a like new project because that's something completely separate and it actually can be moved from dress to dress. I will put that on as a project to do for later. Hello! It is Sunday. <laughs> okay, so it's been a couple days and I am here to report back on what happened. So Friday I went out with my friend Erica and we did a little photo shoot, um, a little witchy photo shoot in my black shimmy Celeron. I will have posted up a few pictures on Instagram and stuff. I will post a few here for you guys so that you can see some of the pictures. These are unedited, so there'll be better better photos coming out as I like edit them and enhance them and maybe try and play with a little bit of like fantasy compositing maybe a little bit with them. We'll see. Um, and then yesterday I sat down and for several hours I stitched and I got her done. So I'm pretty excited. All right, well, here she is, she's all back together, um, pinned tightly onto my dress form, but that's good because this theoretically should be about me sized. It is and it isn't in some ways, but um, I did get uh, the straps reset just fine. It needs to be ironed a little bit, um, but I got the trim back on, So, and I set the trim out a little bit, so as you can see, it's um, set out for just a little bit to so, like kind of act like a tucker. A little bit and give you a little bit more coverage but also um like hide any weird flaws um i got this shoulder set really nice and flat mm -hmm. like i was hoping it all looks good from the back i think it looks great i'm very happy with it the cut of it is much better i love that there's a side seam now like there should be a side back seam um yeah so I am very happy with this dress now. I'm also very happy that it's not on the mend pile anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and cross that off on my list. Dot. Yay. Okay, so that's great and done, and I feel really excited about it. I need to go ahead and do a couple of clean-out items for this week just to keep the ball rolling on that task because, um, you know, I'm not doing it all at once. I'm slow rolling this process so I can think about it. So I'm going to at least get one of these done. So let's go ahead and clean out the back drawers. I'll go ahead and uh, set up my, I don't know what the heck that is. It's like a tripod clamp. And anyway, I will do the, the thing so that you can see what's in the drawers in the back um, while I clean them out. I'm not sure if anything's going gonna, gonna to leave from them because uh, they're not really, that back, back door back there is actually like kind of the miscellaneous junk drawer. So we'll see what happens back there. All right, if I'm looking straight on on my table, this is the back right corner. This is the one next to the closet. Uh, so we have a pocket pattern. We have a face mask ready to go that matches my 18th century Amalia jacket. So this should just get made. This is the old straps from the dress I just fixed. So I'm actually going to 
Uh, part of me is like, you should keep this in case you ever have to patch it. Part of me is just like, get rid of it. <laughs> I'll probably just get rid of it. This right here is a set of shapes that Abby cut on me so that I can have a set of shapes to make 18th century things off of. So this is something I need to keep. Do I need to keep it in here? Maybe, maybe not. This is a, the back two drawers are kind of holding tanks, you'll, as you'll see. Uh, these are long sleeves that go maybe on my Regency dress, although I don't really want long sleeves on my Regency dress, so I don't know if I need these either. <laughs> I just keep them around in case. Um, there are lots of empty bags that are in this drawer, and they are supposed to be in this drawer. Um, I just need to co collate them, I think. Okay, so this drawer contains obviously lots of bags that I can put patterns in, so if every time I get one that I can put a pattern in, um, I keep it. This is my hot iron set, so this actually needs to go in here. So this lives in here. I also have one million different buttonhole cutters. Um, these are actually wood cutting tools, like um, chisels, but you can use them to cut button buttonholes. So I have a, a, a billion different buttonhole cutters in here as you'll watch me pull them out. This is a folder that is full of like generic patterns that I use a lot. So like my mask pattern's in here, a generic pocket pattern is in here, my generic sleeve pattern is in here. I'm gonna put this pocket pattern in here for sure. So that's what goes in there. Uh, this drawer also holds every like big big old ruler I have that and all my curves and stuff. So bag bag Mmm, pattern, mask pattern, buttonhole, buttonhole, mmm, this goes with my iron, these are buttonholes, hole cutters, uh, more bags, I think this might be, uh, like, what is this, transfer paper? What is that called? Uh, yeah, transfer paper. And maybe a wheel's in here? I'm not sure. I never opened this. This is a way to transfer like lines if you need to. I have never tried this method, although people kept recommending it, so I bought the transfer paper. <laughs> I really like my light table method, so, but every now and then, oh, no, it's, so it's transfer paper and these little ball pin situations so you can trace it. And this is every different color. There's like blue and red and yellow and all kinds of things. So maybe someday I will have to do uh, boning channels and that will be it. Okay, so this is a bag of bags. So some of these bags that are here will go into it. This is also a bag of small bags. So these little bags will go into that. This is some like organdy. These are fabric samples from Mood. These are cut for sashiko samples. They're just linen that I've cut for sashiko. So at some point I might use those. And here is the pile of, this is, this is just, paper. I don't know why I have this. I think Lynn sent me this, so I probably need to keep it. This is that button hole maker. Um, it just is a hole punch, essentially, of different sizes. Okay, so here is all my different rulers of different curves and sizes and shapes. So that's what goes here. And I'm fine with these being, like, chaotically here. Everything went in relatively the way it came out. This drawer was never really a problem. So I just um, got all the patterns collated. I got all the bags collated into 
sectional bags. Um, I kind of want to figure out maybe I'll make a little, I'll go get a makeup bag and put some of these buttonhole things in there. So I might do that. I did add my bedazzler and all the bedazzles bag into here. So this is becoming my like tools situation, I think. So that's cool. I'm, I'm living with that. Um, I'm taking these straps out and getting rid of them. This organdy is going to go with where the organdy goes. Um, I think these are not something I need, but I, I guess, am I positive about that? I don't know. Maybe I'll leave these in here for a little bit, but I don't think they actually belong in this drawer, so maybe I'll put them somewhere else. I do have to say that when I went to look for the trim for this dress that I just fixed, and I was like, where did I put that trim? I do frequently put stuff in here that I'm like holding for like a very soon future pattern or future build. Like if, like when we took off the trim, I put it in here because this is a nice safe place to put it that like I can find stuff. So I do put stuff in like that in here. This I am gonna put back in here, this, this pattern, um, because I need to make this into an actual pattern. So what I wanna do is starch these and then trace them off so that I have shapes patterns and then cut <laughs> a sample off of this just to make sure that it is perfect and fit that so that will be a project that i want to do so i need to add that to the board so that is going back in here um this mask is going to just get made so i'm going to keep it out and that is the the finishing touch on what's in this drawer for right now all right this is the back left drawer this is chaos. This is my junk drawer for costuming. So, um, this is 10 yards of essentially fur trim that is, I think, an inch wide, inch and a half wide, like the strip is an inch wide. Um, and I have this in a few different colors, and I found it for a super good price, and I bought a ton of it. So, I keep coming in here and mashing all the air out of these and they keep sucking air back in so I think they are not completely airproof is what I'm saying um so I have a bunch of these why are they in this drawer that is a fantastic question and I don't really have an answer to, to that right now um it's the only place at the time that I got these <laughs> that it all fit um so why did I buy four and a half yards of this one and ten yards of that one is also a fine question what even is this? This is uh, interfacing. Why is it in here? No idea. Here's a, a tiny bag of some. This much stayed here. Why is this in here? No idea. Okay, so then we have hot glue guns. This this actually makes sense for the drawer. This is like what I what I had back here. Um, horse hair braid. Not made out of real horse hair. Glue gun sticks makes sense. Random trim doesn't make sense. Cute trim though, I like it. So I'm gonna go find someplace else for this. Um, hat pins that are blank. Uh, delivery confirmation that I obviously don't need. <laughs> um, this is a box of ye olde antique hat pins and brand new hat pins and um, haunted mansion hat pins. <laughs> Um, so all kinds of hat pins. So like basically, why does that not live in there? No idea. So there's that. Uh, Lucid cord maker. Some more interfacing. Cool. Here are a bunch of belt buckles, paste belt buckles. Um, actually, friend got me these in like South Africa and just collected these over the years. I think you guys have seen me retrieve these on on this channel. So here's a bunch of Georgian belt buckles, essentially. Again, with why are they in there? No idea, but that's where they are. This is the instructions for making lucid cord. I'm not good at making lucid cord. This is a antique button hook that is ready for a chatelaine. Cool. Burn test kit from Carson College. Uh, more fit for trim lining. Some um, bias tape that is striped. Oh my god. Some bias tape that is plaid. Oh my god. Does it belong in here? No. 
um, velvet trim ribbon. Okay. This, I think I bought to make lucid cord, like all of this stuff. Like, I think I got this stuff when I was on my Europe trip. So, do I make lucid cord frequently? No. <laughs> no, I don't. What is this? Oh, this has to do with my dress form. So I should put this actually with my dress form things. More lucid cord stuff. And more of these uh, furs. So cool. What's this? This looks like a pattern. This is a stomacher pattern. Cool. I'm going to put this in my pattern thing that I just showed you guys. Um, and this is some interfacing also for tailoring. Mm, okay. Why is this the interfacing drawer? Anyway, as you can see, this drawer is chaos. Um, I'm okay with having a chaos drawer. I actually am. I think that's not a bad idea in a, in a, in a space. Okay, is this 1000% better? No. Is it 25% better? Yes, in that I can see everything that's in here and I understand what's in here. So I think this is good. I did remove some things and they're just gonna get put in other places. I actually don't know what to do with the interfacing problem because that's not something I use very often, especially iron on interfacing. So maybe I will leave it in here. Maybe that's not like the worst place to keep it. So I'm gonna put that in here as well. And I'll maybe just tuck it here under these glue guns. Okay, so this is done and we have another thing we can cross off the board, yay! Okay, well I kind of want to go watch the closing ceremonies of the Olympics because that's on tonight. Um, I think cleaning up the desk can wait for next week. We also have the closet to clean out. I think maybe I might try to rearrange some of the silks. Like that bottom shelf was one big stack instead of two stacks next to each other. And there may be some way to get a little bit more room out of that. And if so, I might take maybe one or two of the rolls from the closet and fold them. Put them in there. I'd rather I'd rather have like room to hang stuff in my closet than just have all these like interminable amounts of rolls. Unfortunately, my closet also holds stuff like brock room and whatever. But that closet needs a clean out. <laughs> so that's the thing that's going to be on the task list soon. This week was a little weird in the workroom because I was spending spending so much time just like hand stitching that off, like off on my own that like <laughs> I'm sorry if this vlog was weird. <laughs> I know that everyone keeps telling me to just vlog what I vlog and that's fine and that's what happened this week and and it's it's cool so I'm I'm gonna take you guys at your word and, and think okay well that's cool. I am feel so good after nine months of that thing being apart that it's together so that makes me super happy and yeah I I'm really pumped on that. Um, I am trying to figure out about this basket, my, my four cats basket. Can I show you that? Yeah, this right here. Is there a way to show how big this actually is? It's, it's, it's immense. It is so big. Um, <laughs> I should just measure it and tell you what the measurements are. Okay, it's 23 inches wide, 16 inches tall, and 16 inches deep. Like, that thing is pretty big. I could use it to store costumes. I don't know. I'm still thinking about that. Like I I've always wanted one of these baskets. I just have a house that's like not made to own one of these baskets <laughs> because all of our bedrooms, like the room I'm in is not very big. I think this room is like maybe like 12 by 14 or something, which is one of the larger bedrooms. I mean, the master bedroom is huge. <laughs> it's the size of two of the other bedrooms, um, but it also has a bath in it and then like, I have a makeup area in there, which is pretty bomb, but, like, that's another hobby I have that takes up space. <laughs> um, the guest bedroom is, like, 10 by 10. It's so small, and his office is a little, is probably the size of this room, but it has a massive closet. So the only closet in the whole house that is massive is the one he has. So I'm like, ah, why is it this way? Anyway, I, uh, the downstairs areas where there are now six cats instead of seven, single tier for Dakota, is like Spartan. We don't have, 
I mean, we have couches and like tables and stuff like that, but we don't have like a lot of like tchotchkes or like I don't put baskets like this out there. There are cat beds and stuff around, but like that area is huge. <laughs> it has no closets and it is definitely um, designed for cats in mind. So like destructive kitties <laughs> that like to like shred things. And I don't want to put this basket down there because they will just destroy it. They will think it's a scratching post for sure. So because none of the bedrooms have like space for a basket I'm it's in here <laughs> and I'm like okay cool the problem is becoming though that I have like not enough closet space for the costumes that I make yeah I get rid of like fabric from my fabric storage but like I have bins of fabric in the garage too like one two three four five six seven like eight eight bins worth of of fabric like two or three bins worth of hats and like hat making accessories I have like a bin of props I have a ton of boxes with actual hats in them like I have an entire little bin of like masks and stuff like I have just I have so much stuff associated, associated with this hobby that like I should get rid of some of it is probably what what this is coming to <laughs> anyway yeah so that basket I'm, I'm just pondering this basket a lot anyway I think I was apologizing for how weird this vlog is and then I just made it even weirder <laughs> Anyway, um, okay, well, I'm really happy that this gown is done because it's been, you know, niggling at my brain for so long. The other dress, the Regency dress, is like, I could wear it as is. I don't have to modify it. it uh, no one's taken it apart yet, so it's not in as dire of a spot. <laughs> so I'm still pondering that. I do, I do want to make the modifications that were given to me, or maybe I just want to make a new one. I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet, so... <laughs> Still, still processing that, but I gotta figure out this closet situation, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, that is for future Noel. I'm gonna go edit this vlog, and I'm gonna watch the opening, no, closing ceremonies of the Olympics, uh, just so I can get my, like, completionariness. Um, I did finish the first book of A Discovery of Witches. <sighs> what do I think about it? I mean, I liked it. It's a bit adult twilight, I think I said that before, because people have responded to that. So I'm already listening to book two, which is interesting. There's time and travel involved, and I would I would like to see the TV show because there's obviously different costumes involved and stuff. There's stuff that they describe in the book that makes me like <sighs> about <laughs> about the costumes that she's wearing. Um, but I think I think it's also really long. Like the first book was like 24 hours long. Most books that I read are like uh, that I listen to are like somewhere between like 8 and 14 hours so 24 hours is really long actually and so these books must be massive and the second one is equally as long so I mean on the one hand that says yeah I must like it because I'm willing to sit through another one but I think if they like I'm gonna say something probably you guys are gonna hate but like if they just took out this stupid romance part <laughs> Like, I don't need any of that. that. None of that is interesting to me. As, like, a 44-year-old woman who could care less about that part, I'm like, if you just took this out, this book would be an acceptable length, and it would also, like, tighten it up, because it kind of goes on and on and on and on about that part, so... Um, I do, I did like it, I guess like the book enough to read the second one, so. <laughs> and for whoever's listened to me in Morgan's podcast, you will know that if I don't like a book, I will not listen to the second one. In fact, I will, like, kick and scream about reading the book to begin with, <laughs> so... I'm like, am I super hypercritical of books? Like, now this makes me think, am I, am I mean about books? <laughs> I don't know. I just thought, like, I mean, all urban fantasies have some romance, and they always have an obligatory sex scene that I'm, like, obviously sitting in the middle. Like, usually I'm at work listening to, and I'm just like, oh my god, really, right now, can I fast forward through this? Sometimes a romance part is written really well, and some of it, times it's written, like, super cheesed out, and this one is particularly, like, twilighty, so... <laughs> I'm just like, ugh, to this part. But, like, the premise of the book is really good, so, yeah. Anyway, I'm like, am I listening to or watching anything else? Not at the moment, I think. I do want to watch The Gilded Age, but I'm waiting for it all to come out. I am a person who would really prefer to watch the whole thing straight through, especially something like this where, like, I am watching it with kind of a trepidatious breath because of, like, things I've heard about the costume designer, like not believing that the audience is smart enough to like get bustle dresses and I'm like oh my god finally I was gonna have a bustle dress show <sighs> so anyway the pictures I've seen are both good and bad <laughs> also like some of the bustle dresses I'm just like no 
mm -mm, absolutely not. And some of them I'm like, yeah, that's actually historically accurate. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I'm just waiting until they're all out, and apparently there's only four out of nine, so I've got five more weeks to wait. So, there's that. <laughs> so everyone keeps asking me about it and, and wondering if I've seen it yet. I have not. I'm waiting. I will, I will definitely go off about it when I watch it. Trust me. Like there'll be a diatribe about how awesome I have seen pictures of some of the costumes that I'm just like, that is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I like Downton Abbey and everyone says it's pretty Downton Abbey. So we'll see how that goes. I still have a huge mess to clean up from the photo shoot also because like, I can't even tell you what happens when I go on a photo shoot. Like, this is why I don't like, it's not even that I don't like wearing costumes. I love wearing costumes, but like, ugh, there's so many things associated with them. Like, you have to do hair, you have to do makeup, you have to get all your clothes on, you have to drive with your stays on. Like, the whole thing is like, I think it took me two hours just to get out the door and I did not have my hair done. I went to Erica's house, we did my hair for an hour and a half, and then we went out and shot, and that took another like, two and a half hours or whatever so yeah I was out I was I was gone for like I think start to finish the whole thing took, took seven hours I'm like that's why photo shoots are really rough I love doing them though like they are super fun to do but like also I explode everywhere like there's so so much stuff everywhere but it's why I don't like casually shoot my costumes all the time and like why when I'm done making things I'm not showing you like me all decked out like immediately because like it's a process to get ready <laughs> in those things. So if you see those get ready with me videos that people put out that are like 60 seconds, you give that a like and a comment and send that to a friend and repost it because like I, that took a lot of work. <laughs> that took a lot of work to do. So as usual, let me know what you guys are listening to. What is, what are you watching? Did you guys watch the Olympics? Are you into the Olympics? It was a drama filmed. Oh my God, the Russian skating incident. Who that final. The final was a mess. You have one skater coming off the ice getting yelled at by her coach, like absolutely bawling, sobbing, and, and the guy is translating what she's saying. So like, she is yelling at the girl. You have another girl hysterical because she got a silver medal and not a gold medal and she thought she deserved a gold medal. And so all the coaches are dealing, and they all have the same coach. So the coaches are dealing with those two. The girl who won gold is just standing there, like looking around. No one's there to hug her or tell her she did good. Like. She doesn't even understand the the other girl who's her teammate is screaming about why she won a gold medal. Like, it was sad. Like, I was crying. And then the Japanese girl started crying because she was so happy that she won a medal. And I was just like, I was bawling. So, like, I get <laughs> Michaela Schifrin, the skier who, like, crashed out twice. Like, every time she goes, I'm just like, just get down the hill, girl. You did good if you got down the hill. Like, let it go. <laughs> Man. I get so invested. I'm I'm a diehard Olympic Olympics person. Did you guys watch the Olympics? I think is what I was asking. Anyway, let me know what you're reading, what you're watching, what are you working on, what's that? I still haven't figured out what I'm gonna do next week for my vlog. And by the way, next week starts tomorrow, so I'm like I have to figure that out. One of these days, I should do like a maybe I should get my Patreon to vote on like what my next thing I should do is. Could do another like set of small things, but maybe I should do something larger. I don't know. I'm not fully compelled yet, so I'm pondering. Maybe I, I, I don't know. I'm not committing. Okay. <laughs> you guys don't need to hear this. I will see you guys tomorrow. In reality, <laughs> you guys will see me in a week. So I hope you guys have a great week. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.